Hello and welcome everyone. I've been very pleased to contribute my experience with you about COVID and the hypoxic conditions patients are facing. I hope you have and you are benefiting from it, from my experience and from my father's experience as well. As I promised to you earlier on, this was a two-part series and I'll be sharing with you a few other remedies which will be useful. But my friends, this is more like a prelude or I'll be sharing with you more the remedies which is preceding that hypoxic conditions. In the part one, I shared with you remedies which will help you when the patient is gasping for breath, when the patient is hypoxic. But here I'm going to share with you remedies which will be helping you in those conditions which leads up to the hypoxia, which leads up to the gasping, so that you can arrest that further progress and prevent hospital admissions, prevent the patient from going down the line. So, although this is part two, but this is more like a preceding, preluding remedies which can help you to prevent that hypoxic state which you'll associate with the carbo wedge, which a lot of ceruses with anti tart, as I mentioned in my uh, previous part one remedies. Again, these remedies I'm going to share with you in no order of importance, but I'm going to share with you remedies which will be clinically viable and with clinically viable symptoms, which I have myself used as well as experience from my father back in the UK. My friends, one of my topmost, again, for these preluding conditions, preceding conditions to the hypoxia is Sambucus nigra. If you think of Sambucus nigra, one of the very important factors is there's profuse perspiration. The patient is drenched with sweat with the asthmatic attacks. They may not be sweating in the other times, but whenever they're getting that asthmatic attacks, whenever they're getting short of breath, they are bathed in sweat. They are drenched with sweat. That's the keynote. You see, I'm, going to, I'm trying to share with you clinically important factors and symptoms which the patient or his family will tell you and which you can prescribe on the basis of those two or three symptoms. So profuse perspiration with the asthmatic respiratory troubles. Very many times your sambucus is going towards the respiratory failure. And in those cases, especially in patients who have underlying hypertension or cardiac disorders, you'll find there is edema in the dependent parts, there is edema in the legs. That's also quite important for sambucus nigra. Along with that in sambucus, you'll find there is a predominantly midnight aggravation. It's a suffocative cough. So there's a midnight aggravation in case of Sambucus. And along with the lower respiratory symptoms, if you think the patient started off with the acute cold or rhinitis-like symptoms, there's always a concomitant nose block, which is always there with Sambucus. So again, I'm trying to share with you three, four very important clinical factors. Profuse perspiration is drenched with sweat. The patient's Family is calling you up and telling you a doctor is just bathed with sweat whenever he's out of breath. Along with that, there is severe and midnight aggravation. There's nose block. And especially in patients with comorbid comorbidities like hypertension or with cardiac disorders, you'll find there is pedal edema as well. And Sambucus will help in those conditions as well. 6C, 30C, even 200C, if the vitality is strong, can help you with Sambucus. I'll be sharing with you remedies which are important comparatively, comparative wise. I am not including Amon Carb in this group, but Amon Carb is a remedy which will come close to Sambucus considering the nose block. Amon Carb has a very typical 3 to 4 a.m. aggravation like Kelly Carb. So Amon Carb can help you if you have closer symptoms, but again, it's more midnight in Sambucus, it's more 3 to 4 in uh, Amon Carb. So that's one of the differentiating factors. You'll not find the perspiration in uh, Amon Carb, you'll find the perspiration in some bookers. There is no edema in Amon Carb as well. So my first remedy in this list for a COVID pneumonia or a COVID state which is going towards hypoxia, Sambucus nigra is one of your go-to remedies which will help you. My number two in this list is my friends, a remedy which my father had advocated long back since start of COVID in March 2020. I didn't pay much attention to that earlier on. But as time has progressed, but as I have seen patients over time in the subcontinent, I've used this remedy more extensively and with very fruitful results is Justitia adhatoda. It's an Indian drug, but you'll find this in Borike's main section. You'll find this in many other metromedicas. has been used in Ayurveda for thousands of years as Vasaka. But a very important remedy in this fight where patient is again, you can help 
to prevent going towards the hypoxia. Why and how? If you think of a COVID patient with a lot of tightness in the chest, with a lot of oppression in the chest, you think of a phosphorus-like state. But at the same time, he's worse in a warm room. He's suffocated in a closed room. So even with a COVID state, he's asking you, I want the doors and windows open. Like Brynia. So warm room aggravation like Brynia. At the same time, in case of justitia, it's a very dry cough. If you look in Borica's Metromedica, and which is very interesting and important, there's loss of smell and taste. I'm sure you know by now, there's one of the diagnostic factors in COVID-19. So think of a case where you have an oppression like phosphorus. But at the same time, there is suffocation in a warm room like Bryonia. Loss of smell and taste is the common factor there. Along with that, a very dry cough, which Justitia can help you. Believe me, COVID cases which have started, which are just starting, very many times I'm not getting a clear picture. Very many times I've had failures with Bryonia. Your Justitia is coming to your rescue with very fantastic results. Justitia Adatoda in tincture in 6C and 30C is working brilliantly and I'm sure you won't be disappointed, especially in those early cases, which you can use to prevent further progression. My third remedy in this list, my friends, another very important one, again, very closely allied to Justitia is phosphorus. Again, what is the innate features of phosphorus? The oppression in the chest, the tightness in the chest. How to differentiate with Justitia? In phosphorus, you'll always have a left side aggravation. Whenever they're lying on the left side, phosphorus always has an aggravation. Not so much with justitia. Justitia is worse in a warm room. With phosphorus respiratory symptoms, do always remember they're worse from cold air. So you put on the fan, even you put on uh, the air condition, they feel really worse in phosphorus. So even in the hot uh, summer weather, you won't want an air condition in case of phosphorus. So cold air aggravation, phosphorus, warm, warm room aggravation in justitia. Both can have the tightness in the chest, but it's more aggravation lying on left side in case of phosphorus. And it's more a dry cough in justitia. In case of phosphorus, do always remember it is Nash's tree or burning remedies. So very many times when the COVID is progressing, patients can tell you either have a burning sensation in the chest as well. But one of the key factors is the oppression, is the tightness, especially when I'm lying on my left side, which will differentiate phosphorus with other remedies, which is clearly important. 6C, 30C is important for a phosphorus prescription as well. Number four in this list, my friends, is natrum salve. My friends, I'm sure you have heard about lots of people sharing with you remedies for COVID and especially conditions of uh, COVID pneumonia. But sometimes it's important, especially those my homeopathic friends who are listening in, it's sometimes important to go back to your basics. If you haven't heard of this book, Boldland's Pneumonia, then I'm sure you're missing out on something. No matter how much new metromedicas you read, you can always look back to your stalwarts and classical homeopaths for inspiration and support. Boldland in his pneumonia men mentions natrum salve as one of your leading remedies for pneumonia and you understand with COVID-19 it's affecting mostly the basal portion of the lungs, lower lobe of the lungs. Natrum salve is a remedy which has an affinity for the left lung uh, lower lobe. So that's important for natrum salve. Left lung lower lobe is affected. So even if the patient is not telling you I'm paining, having pain in the left side of the chest, you can see from the CT scan findings that there is left lung lower lobe involvement. Other than that, do always understand natrum salve is a psychotic remedy. But very interestingly for natrum salve asthma, it's a 4 to 5 a.m. aggravation, which is very classical. And again, stage states of COVID pneumonia, which is going towards hypoxia, as I shared with you. I'm sharing with you remedies which will prevent the further progress. So think of cases which you don't want to go to that hypoxic state where the patient is in dire needs of oxygen and admission. In those cases, patient is a constant desire to take deep, long breaths. That's a very classical description of natrum salve. <sighs> I need deep, long breaths. That's a classical description of natrum salve. <sighs> so 4 to 5 m aggravation is defying the psychotic, my, psychotic myasms modality. All psychotic medicines have a daytime aggravation, sunrise to sunset. But in natrum salve's asthma, it defies the modality. There is an early morning aggravation, 4 to 5 a.m. Left lung, lower lobe is affected. See it through the findings or even if the patient is telling you. 
There's a constant desire to take a deep breath. That's important for natrium salt. Two other factors, if you can find, wonderful, is a thick yellow greenish expectoration. Sometimes greenish yellow, sometimes yellowish green, psychotic, natrium salt can help you. And patient is holding the chest, which is important natrium salt as well. But with this state of COVID-19, I found with natrium salt that that factor of needing to take deep breaths, that's important. That four to five AM aggravation is important. That's the golden hour for natrium salt. Along with that, the involvement of left lung, lower lobe. That's one of the classical factors for a natrium salt prescription. I gave you some bucus, I gave you justitia, I gave you phosphorus, I gave you natrium salt. My number five in this list, my friends, another medicine which is more towards going towards hypoxia rather than a pneumonia is Grindelia. In Grindelia robusta, you'll find there is severe asthmatic attacks, especially when they're lying down. Especially when they lie down. So always have to be in a propped up position. They cannot lie down at all because it flares up the asthma. Along with that, you're finding the blood pressure to be low. In Grindelia, it's always a hypotension which is present, which is a very important factor. And along with that in Grindelia, there's a tough, tenacious expectoration. And whenever they bring out that phlegm, they always feel better. So tough, tenacious expectoration, very much like Calibic and also very much like Senega as well. Senega has also got a very tough, tenacious expectoration. But the difference here, in case of Grindelia, the lying down aggravation is severe. They cannot bear to be in a lying down position, A. And B, in case of Senega, you'll find a soreness in the chest wall, which is not present in Grindelia. So my friends, you have to understand the comparative metromedica here. So I'll be able to differentiate based on two, three remedies. You don't have the time, you don't have the privilege, nor the opportunity to go for repertorization in every case. And I believe me by friends, that won't help you either. Try and understand the clinical, innate clinical differentiations. As I shared with you, cannot lie down, it's Grindelia. It's a tough, sticky, tenacious expectoration. That's Grindelia. It makes me better, it does. And I'm feeling hypotensive as well, that is Grindelia. Difference with Senega, as I shared with you, soreness in the chest walls in Senega. As I shared with you, again, there's a sticky expectoration in Senega. Senega is trying to bring up the phlegm, but he cannot. Again, for Grindelia, 6C, 30C is important. Natrum salve, I missed the potency. Natrum salve, 6X, you can use it as a tissue salt. Even 30C and 200C, if the vitality is strong, it can help you as well. <coughs> my number six in this list, my friends, again, my understanding from Borland's pneumonia, Rumex crispus. Very many of you may not have used this remedy. Again, I'm sharing with you a medicine where you can help prevent the COVID hypoxia. There's a dry tickling cough. Day two, day three, day four of COVID. Tickling cough. I cannot bear the cold air. I cannot bear even the fan. It's causing me severe aggravation. That's important. Along with that, in case of Rumex, always remember, there's a left lung, lower lobe involved as well, like natrum salve. So upper respiratory, there is tickling cough, worse from cold air. Any inhalation of air, that makes them worse. Left lung, lower lobe involved. Very classical understanding of Rumex crispus is there is diminished secretion of the mucous membrane. So there is no mucus here. There is no mucus collected here. It's just the tickling there but there's increased sensibility of the mucous membrane. Whenever there is cold air, whenever I inhale cold air, that flares up the cough. That's important for Rumex crispus as well. 6C, 30C is important for Rumex, my friends. Number seven in this list, my friends, is another gem of a remedy, which you'll find given in description in Bhanja's therapeutics, Casey Bhanja's therapeutics, where it discusses about pneumonia and I've used this remedy as well, is bromium. Whenever you think of a bromium, you'll find, again, lower pneumonia, lower lobe is affected, right lung, lower lobe in case of bromium. Again, one of the factors for bromium is you want to prevent the patient from going to a hypoxic state. There's a sensation that it cannot get the air into the lungs. So very many patients will tell you this who are needing oxygen. I cannot get the air into the lungs. You look at the CT scan findings, you find there is involvement of the lower, lower lobe of the right lung. A, B, patient is telling you in his own expressions, there is not enough space to get in the air. I am not being able to get enough air into the lungs. That is a very decisive factor for a bromium prescription. And if he's under, has been on your patient for a long time, you'll know that with bromium, there is gland scrofulosis, which is an important feature in bromium as well. 
but the one of the distinctive factors for prescribing bromium is I'm not being able to get air into the lungs. So I shared with you Sambucus, I shared with you Justitia, I shared with you Phosphorus, I shared with you Grindelia, I shared with you Natrum Salf, I shared with you Rumex, and I shared with you Bromium. Few other remedies, my friends, which deserve attention is, and I've shared these remedies in my COVID story, is there's another video on my COVID story, and I've used this remedy with great success to please remember Stana Metallicum and Kelly Carb as well, which are wonderful remedies to prevent that going into the hypoxic state. In Stana Metallicum, there's so much debility. There's chest weakness. I can hardly talk. That's what happened to me when I had COVID last year. I'm better by expectoration in Stana Metallicum. Like Iriodictyon. Remember, Iriodictyon has also got a wheezing and rattling, and they're better by expectoration. In Stana Metallicum, similarly, this chest weakness. Patient is telling you, my chest is feeling so weak. It's not my entire body, but my chest feels so weak. I can hardly talk. That's important for Stana Metallicum. Better from expectoration. That's important. I shared with, in my COVID story as well, Kelly Kaaba remedy, which helped me extensively when I was having profuse perspiration, when I was having a lot of weakness. Those are remedies which help me dearly in those conditions. My friends, I've learned this as an ancestral tip, but frankly, honestly, I haven't used this in the past before 2020 with such important results. And I'd like to share with you the remedies which have been taught as ancestral tips for affecting different lobes of the lungs. And I want you to use this in your clinical practice as well. I'm going to share with you especially the remedies which affects the lower lobe, right lung, lower lobe, Brynia, Kelika, Merxol, Chelidonium. I repeat, right lung, lower lobe is affected. Brynia, Kelika, Merxol, Chelidonium, Lycopodium. Left lung, lower lobe, Natrum Sulf, Rumex, Cephalinum. I repeat, left lung, lower lobe, Natrum Sulf, Rumex, Cephalinum. So use these remedies judiciously. And I hope with this you can prevent the further progress of the patient. And I hope you do not need the remedies which I shared with you in part one if you use these remedies judiciously and extensively. Thank you very much. Just on a quick note, I'd like to share with you, I'll be starting a postgraduate program in 29th of this month. So if any of you are interested, do join in. Let, uh, write me an email and I'll give you extensive details. Thank you very much. Long live Hanuman. Long live homeopathy.